for that introduction. Um, I love what I do. So this is a really cool opportunity to, to share some of that. We're in such a, um, a visual world these days, especially when it comes to business of how we, how we show up specifically to social media, whether we're selling products, we're selling our services, or we're just enjoying co that connection. And obviously now more than ever, uh, there is a little bit of a physical disconnect, but I feel that we're being more connected than ever on social media through things like this, like Zoom. So I'm really, really pumped to be here. I'm gonna pull up my presentation. Let's share this. So I call this um, styling for social, infusing your brand into your visual strategy. So styling is uh, it's something that I do. It's really, it's a creative process to um, bring in and make really awesome imagery that just kind of shows who we are and what we do. So very you see my intro, that's me. So my title is professional prop and social stylist. I like putting that social in there because we are social, we're social beings and we want to connect. And through Instagram, which is really where I'll kind of focus in on today, um, but a lot of these um, principles can be applied to many different social platforms. So whatever one you kind of honed in on for your business. And like Jenna mentioned, I'm the co-host of the Social Focus podcast. If you haven't checked it out, we are basically wherever podcasts are. And we share a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today in our episodes. The podcast is really about um, just showing up on social media, but also balancing that social life because that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so if you haven't checked it out, would love for you to do that. So I've broken down the presentation into three parts. So the importance of brand style, uh, some tips to creating brand reflective imagery as it relates to social media, and then just some simple strategies for Instagram. Uh, again, like I mentioned, I'm gonna kind of hone in on Instagram because that's usually where I hang out, but that is one of the most visual social media platforms out there. And it's an incredible tool for business. So the importance of brand style. So I'm not going to give a lesson on branding, but your brand is what differentiate, differentiates you from others. It's how we stand out. And if you've ever been kind of scrolling on Instagram, I mean, it's, it can be overwhelming. There's, there's lots to kind of pull from. So I find having really great imagery is that first kind of, okay, I like this, this I resonate with. Now, what do they have to say about this? Um, so developing that unique brand style, it is important because we're so visual that we want to grab people's attention and it's, it's hard sometimes. And some of these tips that I'm going to share today, I think hopefully will resonate and, and help you really show up for your business. So when we're using Instagram, we're, we're showing people, you know, what they can expect from us. And that's done through the imagery. And then of course the captions and the messaging that, that we're also including, which is just as important. But by following your brand of like who you are and laying that out, and I'll get into more detail about that, that way when you, you're building your audience and hopefully the right audience, the, the people who really resonate with your message and either are your customers or potential customers, it sets the stage of what they can expect from you. And that's brand recognition, right? We want to be recognized as the, that person in that field of this is what we're, we're the best at or we're really great at that. So when I talk about brand recognition, I'm using this example here. It's a holiday Monday, might as well have some champagne. So I'm gonna use Veuve Clicquot as my little example because I really would love to have a glass of champagne on a holiday weekend with sunshine, but that's not happening today. So Veuve Clicquot, actually I'll jump back. So just this single bottle, this is a product. So I, I'm sure there's probably a bit of product and I'm sure service-based businesses on today. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of dive into both in examples, but certainly we'll have time at the end for some Q and A's. Um, but in relation to Vuclico, they're a product-based business. And, you know, we, we look at their label and it's that beautiful orange and a little bit of that gold. And then here they are on social media. And when I'm talking about brand recognition, I want you to look at these images. Now they've included their product in almost every shot, not every shot. But that orange, even their, their logo, their profile picture has that orange. So right away, I know if you're, if you like the Clico particularly, or maybe there's a certain, um, even the LCBO green, like if you start to see those better example, the golden arches, McDonald's side note, if you've driven up, I think it's on 86, there's a big billboard and it's half of the M for McDonald's. They just put half. 
But driving by, if you've seen it, you'll completely resonate and you'll know that's McDonald's. They just showed that half, but we don't need to see the rest because they've built up such an incredible brand recognition. That shape of the, of the M for the golden arches, the yellow, maybe I'm just craving a cheeseburger right now, I don't know. But that's to me is a great example of, of brand recognition. Now, when we're talking on social, so I'll use this as an example. So Veblico, they've included their product, but here and there, they've also brought in other elements of that orange. So if you're following along because this is a brand that you love, the goal really is when people are scrolling and then to say, oh, I know exactly who that is because I recognize that orange or that style or that feel or that vibe. And that's really a lot of the intention with Instagram. I mean, that to me would be winning where someone goes through and they know exactly who it is and what to expect. Another example, so this is a smaller shop example. This is actually a beautiful little uh, boutique store in Palm Springs, California that I visited when I was out there earlier this year. Now, very, very different style, very, very different tones. I personally follow these guys on Instagram and every time I put this in because every time I'm going through doing that scroll, uh, an image will come up and I'm like, before I even look at the profile picture, I'm recognizing it's thick as thieves because they've built this brand style and they've been consistent. And I'm going to use the word consistency a lot because I feel like that's what's really, really important to execute on social media to have that recognition. So that's kind of the branding side. I'm going to move right into just some of my tips for creating brand reflective imagery. So imagery that's going to look like you, like your business. When we're entrepreneurs, we are the face of our business. Even if you have a team or a colleague or a partner, um, to develop what that style is and then execute it with consistency, that's going to do wonders for your brand. So one of my first tips to start with that is choosing tones. So I'm getting very literal here. When I say tones, I, tones is kind of setting the whole landscape of how things are gonna come together. Now, when you land on someone's Instagram feed, you know, you see those nine squares or those 12 squares, and you can really see that, that balancing out, that's because there's usually a good tone there. So my first recommendation when you're creating images, and we're gonna get into a little bit more of that, Start with how do I want my tone or how do I want people to feel? What is What would make more sense for my business, product or service, doesn't matter. So I've given some examples and it's just kind of, kind of clockwise. So that top left hand picture, is, it's a little bit more dark and moody. It's creating a little bit more of that, that downward tone where bold and colorful with the yellows is, you know, is really happy and excited. And then we move into light and airy and earthy. Now this is going to change based on what your business is. If, um, you know, you're a tropical juice company, well, yeah, you're probably going to want to reflect those, those bright and fun colors and tones. So that's just something to first think about is you can even come up with a few words. Like if I had, a, if a customer, my favorite customer said these three words about my business, that might actually lend to choosing that tone in that imagery and then be consistent with that. So when you're actually taking photos, I want you to always think about what is this, is this tone? Because once you start to really consistently stick with it, you're going to get that flow and that brand recognition. People are going to start to notice, yes, that's, I know exactly who that is. So I say that by, um, by setting your base. Now, when you're, when I talk about your base, let's say you're, you're setting up, whether it's a flat lay. So a flat lay would be something shot overhead it's very similar to the way the spoons have been laid out that's an overhead flat lay shot or even just something on the counter these lilacs uh, this is an image from my kitchen counter and so it's just you know it's a scene so my marble countertop really gives that more light and airy tone where you know setting up these spoons is a bit more dark and moody so because i've used them on like a barn board so that's a great little tip for if you're taking your own images that base that backdrop that's one of the first things that is going to really set the tone and then other ways that you can do that would be through edits and adding any filters now i'm going to move into colors because going back to that example with Veuve Clicquot that orange again if that's if you find think of a brand that you love or a product or a business you love and if you can associate a color that's really really important because it does go back to being reflective in your imagery so if you haven't already, or this is something very new, I would suggest starting with your tone, 
and then choosing some colors or a color palette that accentuates not just the tones, but who you are. So going back to maybe those three words how your customer would describe you. And incorporating those colors into your shot consistently, that's where you start to build this connection. And I, I, I like to go back, when I, when I think about kind of a visual strategy, when I work with clients, best way I can describe it is for Instagram specifically, if you're, if you're looking at those nine squares, your Instagram, Instagram grid or your feed, of just where you can start to implement those little colors. It doesn't have to be in your face. It could be very, very subtle. But when we're consistent and going in with intention, you really do start to build out that balance. Um, a side suggestion, personally, myself, for my business, I chose my color palette when I shifted my business full time for styling. I like to think I have a bubbly personality and I love wearing denim. I love jeans. My favorite color is yellow. I literally built up my color brand palette based on what I love because I'm an entrepreneur. It's my business. So it actually made it a lot easier. Um, so choosing those two to three uh, brands, I'm just going to skip ahead. So this image is of me. I booked a brand shoot. I take a lot of my own images, but I've also invested in, in doing a style shoot so that I could get some more pictures of me working in my business. But what I loved when I chose my colors I chose that, that kind of blue denim and I love my yellow because that's what I wear. So when I'm also showing up in my images, nine times out of 10, I'm usually in denim or something bright and bold. So it actually made it easier for me to blend in, even if I'm taking a selfie of what I'm wearing and incorporating that, it's still looking like me because I've, I've, I've chosen that. And that's the best part about that, this whole creative process. We have the, like, the, the opportunity to choose how we wanna show up and how we want our business to look. So that's what I would suggest after tones. It's just choosing those two to three colors that are reflective of your brand. Maybe you already have a logo or you have a branding package. Perfect. Now, when it comes to creating your shot, start using those colors and those tones in your setup. And it should always be relative to what you're talking about as well. But bringing in colors through props, which we'll get into a little bit more, the surfaces or the base you're using, or your actual products or the tools that you use to operate your business, and that's a lot for service-based businesses, that's a great way to just bring in those colors so that in the grand scheme of things, we're creating that consistent visual strategy, and when people are scrolling through, they're going to recognize that it's you. So here are just kind of four images um, that th this is from my personal shoot, where just those little pops and so the, the bottom picture of me, that's me in my kitchen. I, I had this on my shot list because I do work a lot in my kitchen. I have a little boy running around who's usually at my toes with a bunch of trains. And so I wanted that image of me talking about, you know, working from home and that I'm a mom. And so bringing in that pop of color was the popsicle. That was my prop. And that's how I just had that little kind of tie in. Um, I didn't have to go out and buy popsicles. I have a crap load of popsicles in my fridge because that's all my kid could eat. He would love that. Um, so just that's the storytelling. So, and we'll get into that in, in when we talk a little bit more about Instagram because Instagram really is a lot of storytelling, right? It's how we convey who we are and what we do. Um, so this is just kind of those tips to bring it all together more aesthetically and visually. So I'm bringing these two examples back um, just to take one last look of setting those tones so they're just they're worked in here these are two very different looks one on the right because these would be more earthy Vaclico would be a little bit more bold and colorful but those just unique ways and different shots that they've incorporated it still looks like them even though the shots are very very different Vogue doesn't have to always have that big splash of orange like this middle picture of, of the lady in the coat you know that's really out there but then they've just subtly put it in i love this top right picture of the girl holding the glass to the camera you know they've added probably i think that's probably an aperol spritzer and so they're not you know being a little bit less intentional of actually having the product every time but thinking outside the box of still tying in those brand colors and tones but maybe not always with the actual product so i'm just i wanted to share this again just to balance it out a little bit and I feel like these two brands have done really, really well with that. So creating your own images. This is the fun part. Maybe not for others, but this is my bread and butter. So the first thing I would recommend, if you're getting ready, because it does take time. 
If you're like, I want to take some of my own pictures, I want to use them for social, I want to have something because I have something to say, the first piece of advice, and it's the same thing when I work with clients, the first thing we would do, decide on your message. And your message is ultimately going to be your shot list. What are the shots that I want to get? You're putting the cart in front of the horse, behind, in front of the horse is the saying. Um, if you do it backwards. So I find if you're using an image and you're trying to craft a message to that image, that's hard. And I feel like that's where a lot of people find it difficult of, I don't know what to post on Instagram. Like I have this, but I don't really know what to say. But if you take time and I'm not, this doesn't just happen. There is an intention, you know, setting aside time, writing it out. What do I want to say? What do I want to share? What do I want to sell? What do I want to offer? How can I, what do I want to educate my audience with? Maybe I want to introduce myself, but starting with developing your message first, I find takes off a lot of that pressure and then being able to go, okay, well, I know that I have this product that's coming out and it's brand new and I'm really excited about it. Now I can create a shot list for that. Okay. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense, but truly visual strategy is awesome. But if you don't have a great message to go with it, it's just a pretty picture. So I'm going to get into a little bit more technical and I'm going to give you some space. Space. So if you're ever thinking you're about to start creating some images for yourself, just remember space. Start with your surface. And that really goes back to setting that tone. So your surface could be the space you're working in. So if you're taking some pictures in your kitchen because that, you know, you were in a food industry or your office or uh, your service could be an actual, your, your base. If you're wanting to set up a flat lay and we're going to talk about props all the elements that you're going to bring in that are going to help convey that message because we're starting with our message. So that's a great way to, hmm, how can I talk about this? These are the things I should bring in. Oh, this new product, it has lemons in it. Oh, that would be a good prop. That's great. And then arrangement. So actually how we're setting it up, capturing, so snapping. Um, most of the images I do, well, all the images I do on my own social is with my iPhone and then edits because editing is a really important process. So first with services. Um, like I said, it's your base. It could be your tabletop. Could, it could be your kitchen countertop. These are just those um, foam boards. They're from the dollar store. So um, you can even get the Bristol board, the colored sheets as well. These ones are a little bit more sturdy because they are the foam. Um, obviously, a black backdrop would be setting the tone of probably something a little bit more dark and moody, where a white would be more light and airy or bringing in colorful props. You could go that way. Um, for example, uh, this is one of my shots that I did and it's just on like a light pale blue because I wanted to be able to bring in some of my blues and clearly there's a glass of wine because if you haven't followed me on Instagram, you know, I love my wine. Um, and then moving into props. So I say that the props are the main component of the shot and what you would decide to include. So your main product or prop could be your actual product. And for service-based businesses, I like to say, you know, what are the tools that you use to operate your business? Are you like always on your phone or are you in your vehicle or are you recording with a mic or, you know, are you in the finance sector? So, you know, it's number crunching. So maybe it's a calculator. So the tools that we actually use could be your props. And that's a great way of storytelling, especially for the service. I find um, I get a lot of feedback from service-based businesses. They're like, I'm not really sure how to do it. Like I don't sell this thing. I can't just take a picture of it. So that's where I usually recommend, how do you operate? Show people. If you're in your car, have your spouse or your friend or your neighbor take a photo of you. Like if you're on the road, like, okay, hitting the road again. That's part of just a great way to share because also Instagram is a great way to connect. We want to connect to the right audience and we want people to understand how we work or why we work or why we do what we do, what drives us, what's the passion. That's the whole part of building a connection. Uh, so th this is just a great example for props. Um, this is exactly how I look usually going into a style shoot. Maybe my hair is not as polished, but I bring in crates of props and I knew this was on my shot list. I wanted to talk about, um, for, for my Instagram as an entrepreneur, as a business, I knew, okay, I want to be able to show people like, what does, what do I do? And a lot of what I do is I show up at your place with a ton of stuff when we're ready for a shoot. So that's what this image is. And that's exactly how I shared it on Instagram. It's like, this would be me showing up with my crate, with all my goodies. 
of course, when it was for my shoot, I made sure I incorporated my yellows and my blues because I wanted, I knew it was going to be for me. So arrangements. This is the fun part. This is where, take that pressure off. If you're, whatever you've got, you've decided on some props, you've got a surface, start playing around. Make it fun. Snap away, move things around, adjust, kind of take a step back. That's all it is. Just putting some simple arrangements. You don't have to go overboard. Just start. Start to see how it feels. And, and if you can look and, you, you know, take a picture and look and, yeah, okay, this looks like something. This is a start. And again, we're going to add some edits to it. We can still make some adjustments. But my biggest recommendation, just start arranging things around. And I feel like you might have a better um, or a, a more confidence in doing so if you know what your message is. And that's why I always go back to that, having the, that shot list and those messages. Nobody knows your business better than you. So if you know what you want to say, just start practicing of how you can maybe show that visually. And an, another tip with that, look on Instagram. What are, what are someone you know you're aligned with or aspire to be like? Look at what they're doing. It's not copying. I, everything I put out, I hope that, I, I hope I see something similar. I hope someone was like, I was really inspired by that. I'm going to give my hand at that. Awesome. Because no one can do you better than you. So I'm sharing this little um, arrangement video. This is pretty typical of when I'm creating my own images at home. Um, you can see I'm actually, I'm set up in front of a window. I'm actually not moving that fast. I have fast forward this a little bit. Mind you, I probably could work that fast. Um, so I'm in front of a window, which is a really great tip because it's better for lighting. So let's pretend that Esca, this water, maybe that's the product that I'm styling for. So it's a soda water. I know that there's lemons in it. So perfect. Those are going to be some accentuating props. I have this mesh bag because maybe I want this to feel like a little bit of a beach feel. I've added in some oranges for some extra color. And these are other little props. They are actually little coasters that go under a glass. So they're relevant. They're not just there. They still also give that beach vibe. I have a passport uh, holder there. Um, so really, really simple. But the water would be my main prop. And then I've just got other things that would accentuate that look. So I snapped away. I took a ton of photos. And ultimately, this would be the image um, that came out of it. Now, this is after an edit, but we've set that tone with the, with the base. So that blue, really kind of ocean, fun, summer. We've added in our prop, so our main product, and then some nice accentuating props that really help storytell it. When I look at this, I'm trying to create the intention that I have when I work with clients, when I create my own, and what I want to share with you today is talking about, you know, creating that experience. To me, oh, this was what May 2-4 should be looking like right now. It should be a beach bag with some lemons and some cold drinks and head down to the beach. Unfortunately, it's not, but that's that, that to me, that's the visual I would want to portray. So, you know, if things were back to normal and it's May 2-4 weekend, maybe this would be something on a Friday I would share and be like, woohoo, long weekend's here. Who's going to the beach? So I hope that kind of helps explain that. Now for capturing, so while you're, you know, you've got your arrangements, I also suggest as you're arranging, just keep snapping. You can delete, you can always delete. So snap away, try different angles, get up close, try from afar, rearrange things, add more, take away. This is, it's part of a process, but I find the more, you know, the more we do anything, we get better at it. So if you take a variety of shots, you are going to have more options. And like I mentioned, setting up in front of a window um, or a, a large door that brings in natural light, that's really helpful because it eliminates a lot of what I feel is most people's biggest pain point is the editing process. Um, so if you do set yourself up well in a well-lit room and a second tip, turn your lights off. Because if you have your lights on, if you're shooting in front of a window and you have your lights on, um, you're going to get that kind of yellow tinge. It's something you could probably edit out. But again, editing can be tricky. So set yourself up to make it so much easier. And then you're going to feel so much better when you can put a good edit or filter on and be like, I like this. And you're proud to share it. And you've crafted it. So editing. Oh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so I won't get into a full editing tutorial today. But I will share, um, so Facetune, Snapseed, 
Lightroom Mobile, all great editing apps. There are so many apps out there. Um, and the biggest suggestion with that is to play around with it. Now, Instagram, you know, they include filters right in there. Um, so you can always use filters. If that's a good way to get started for you, that's no problem. I, I do recommend though, looking for an editing app outside of Instagram and playing around with it there and keeping in mind that when you're editing to be consistent so that those images are all falling in line with that tone. Um, so if you're going for that kind of light and airy or more earthy. Lightroom Mobile, you might have heard presets. So presets are items that you can buy online. Uh, Creative Market is a place you can buy presets. And they are basically done for you edits. So you, if you look at creativemarket.com, uh, search presets, you'll, you'll see. It's a great way to kind of look and basically uh, you copy and edit that's already done and filters have been added and you paste it. And you can paste it onto basically all your images and that's what's gonna give that consistent feel. Um, so that would be maybe something to try out. It's, it is a little bit easier. So if this is something really new, I would look, I would download Lightroom Mobile because that's how you would apply it and then look at presets. Otherwise, if you can play around with a few edits, but you feel confident that it looks like you and you're proud to share it, then go for it. So hopefully I haven't overwhelmed you, but those are some tips for, you know, creating those images, those images for yourself. Um, now some strategies, I wanted to share in some, some strategies for Instagram because now we've, we've come up with our message and we've crafted some images and now it's time to open that Instagram app and share. So my biggest suggestions for Instagram, whether you are just looking to uh, show up or you're looking to uh, grow your audience, you're looking to make sales, you're looking to grow your client list, um, you're looking to just be entertained or entertain others or educate others, first thing, be consistent with anything. Consistency is king. You know, uh, and be consistent for what works for you. I know that a lot of people say show up every day, which I do almost every day. Now, if that doesn't work for you, if that's overwhelming, and if that is like just way too much, then find a consistent strategy that works for you. So maybe it's, I'm going to commit to three times a week. Maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those are my times I'm going to commit to that. And then from there, start to see how your engagement is or any growth that's coming. So consistency, anything with Instagram, that would be my number one. Because it's just showing up here and there, the way the algorithm works, you're going to get lost. So there's got to be some consistent strategy there. Um, posting a few different themes. When I talk about themes, one of the examples I'll give, so over at uh, the podcast I'm a co-host of, The Social Focus, we developed three themes and we try to implement that in our posts. It gives variety and it helps us actually craft our messaging because it's not like, oh, what are we gonna post today? We, we plan them out and we have an idea and we always want them to fall back into a certain theme. So for the podcast, the theme is educate, entertain, and empower. So educating is where we share our tips. Entertaining is usually something kind of funny. Um, we use a lot of these like gifts and sometimes it's just connecting of like, yeah, we love Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. So we've shared a bunch of their stuff and it's just entertaining. And because we want to have fun, we built this podcast out because we want to entertain, we want to educate and empower. Um, and so an empowering could be some quotes creating some nice quotes or uh, some words of wisdom to inspire people. So find out what, you know, what, what that might be for you. And that's going to be crafted into your message. The other tip, your captions should sound like you. So less robotic. If it's not something, read it out loud. If you're writing out your caption, um, read it out loud. Does it sound like you? Are you fumbling on your own written words? That might be backspace and try again but we really want to have that energy as if we're talking to our dream client. Write your captions as even if you're not selling, but imagine that you know for sure your dream client is going to be reading this. Talk to them like you have their ear and their full attention and do that consistently. Other strategies, 
uh, use Instagram stories. Stories are great for growing your engagement. It can also take the pressure off, if it, especially if starting out, if you find, you know, posting every day in your feed is overwhelming. Like I said, be consistent, find, find what works for you. So if it's twice a week or three times a week, great. But showing up in Instagram stories, more people are watching stories, especially now because we have this time and everyone's online. Instagram stories is also a great way to take some of that pressure off. You can be silly in stories. They expire in 24 hours. I've been on stories before and I've fumbled on my words or I've said something really embarrassing and I just keep going. It's like, oh, well. And again, that's, that's part of that connection. That is an opportunity for your potential clients or customers or followers or great audience that you want to connect with to see who you are. And you know what? There's no fault in showing up and being like, I'm really nervous. This is my first. Be honest. That's what stories are for. Um, I find that Instagram is a great way to just craft and put really good intention into your feed. And stories is a great place to do the same, but to be a little bit more lax and have some fun with it. So I would strongly suggest utilizing Instagram stories. It's a great way to build a personal connection. And then from there, IGTV. I think IGTV is just going to be one of those things that are on the up and up. So if you're unfamiliar with IGTV, it's um, more of, it's a channel. So it's, it's longer videos. If you have under 10,000 followers, you have up to 10 minutes that you can share. I like to recommend, especially when starting out, maybe just create, if you're, if you're looking to utilize IGTV, create, you know, a two to three minute video. Think of how, you know, you utilize Instagram. If you're watching something for 10 minutes and you're like, oh, you know what? Like, I just, I don't have the time for it or they're not really getting to it. IGTV is great for quick videos where you can educate someone in a quick period of time. It's great for um, what I would suggest if you're doing a first IGTV, make it an introduction video. Speak to your dream client. Hey guys, I'm Ange. Welcome to my channel. Here on my Instagram feed, I love sharing everything about styling. I love visually storytelling and I want to help you create amazing images that you can show up on your feed. So if you like it, follow along and I look forward to seeing you in stories. Um, if you want to check me out, you can visit my link in bio and that's where all my portfolio is on my website. It could be something as quick as that and it sits on your, pro your profile. So that could be a great, you know, here's my intro video. This is what I do. This is how I do it. From there, on my personal IGTV, I share little kind of behind the scenes and tutorials of this is how I did that. So it is a great platform. Um, it just takes it to the next level, but I find video is, is king and it's still going. So look into experimenting with that. I do recommend it. So I put this slide in so I could check my timing. Okay, so we're about 10.40. Okay, so I do wanna make sure we have time for some questions. Uh, I'll share a few more little details that might be helpful if you found this presentation helpful. Uh, like I mentioned, some of the episodes we've recently done on the social focus, um, episode two, what your audience wants from you. Um, episode four, how to create better captions, which is great, again, going back to that message. Episode 14 is my solo show. I think it's about seven minutes long. And I'm sharing my three pieces of equipment that I like to use for social. And this one is really honed in on um, for IGTV and Instagram stories. There's some, and the three pieces I share, they're all from Amazon and they're all under $20. And they make a big difference. I'll give you a sneak peek. One of them is this little thing. My little iPhone tripod. It's fantastic and I love it. And I use it every day. Um, and then episode 16, we're really proud of with the social focus we launched in uh, February and we grew our following to a thousand followers in less than three months. And in that episode, we're just sharing all the techniques we use. So we talked a little bit about Instagram strategy today. That's a great episode. I think it's just under half an hour uh, to tune in because I think there'll be some great, great takeaways um, if that's something that you're looking to do. Otherwise, um, you can find me, I'm Angela.S.Doyon, had to make it difficult, uh, on Instagram and the social.focus on Instagram. Again, um, both platforms love to share uh, educational pieces, empowering pieces, and the odd entertaining piece. And with the social focus, we are just about, we've announced it, but tomorrow is our offic official opening date for the social storytellers community. 
It's an online membership community. We're really proud. It launches, the doors um, open for it for members June 1st. So through the links in these bios, all the information is there if you want to learn a little bit more. It's more of a guided, it's an online course, but it's in a membership platform where Nat, who's my co-host at The Social Focus, we have put together, we both had a workshop and a course. We've merged them. So it's all about taking better photos, editing, shooting, styling, and all Instagram strategies. And it's a guided um, membership community where we just want to help guide entrepreneurs along. Included in it, we create every month 30 styled stock images, which our episode next week on the Social Focus podcast is all about how to use stock images because they are great to help piece in the in-between. Um, otherwise, we also have a webinar this Thursday, and it's our styling and shooting webinar. We hosted it last month. It was great. We got some great feedback, and we thought, well, why not? We're going to do it again. So that's this Thursday at 10 a.m., and same thing in either my link or the social.focus link. All the, uh, the details are in there. You just have to register, um, but we're pretty excited for that because it was really great response last time, so we thought we'll share it again. That's all I have to say. Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ang Angela. Sorry. Um, we did have some questions come up in the chat, so I will read them out. Um, yeah. So from John, when you were talking about captions, he wants to know how long a caption should be. Great question. Um, again, I always like to tell people, put, your, put yourself in the position that when you're reading a caption, what feel, what, what's too long for you? That might help. Um, if it feels too long, it is too long. I find, let's not forget. So when you're, if it's an important message and it's going to take longer to convey, but you have that confidence, like, no, I need to put it here, then go for it. From a technical standpoint, I would, it's called Instagram. So when I always think Insta, so we want to get it. So if that helps, I always think simpler and shorter is better. A great technique for that might be uh, including a CTA, so a call to action. So if you're sharing something, but you still have more to say, where can you send them to get more? Because then you're also speaking to the right people. The ones who want to learn more will, will accept that call to action. So maybe it's a, do you wanna know more? I have the rest of this story, or I have a few more things I'd love to share. Send me a DM. You could have it all crafted too. Like you could have it in notes, have what the rest of you wanted to say. And anyone who DM sends you a DM, copy and paste it. There you go. Or direct them to your blog or your website. Um, but again, if it's something that you feel is like the meat and potatoes and you want to share it all, then by all means. Or, uh, hey guys, you know, this is part one of two. Check back tomorrow and I'm going to share the rest. That also gives you an opportunity to do perfect. Now I got two posts ready for the week. So you can always separate them as well or sharing your stories or on IGTV. Sometimes it's easier to just give that little taste and say, okay, now go check it out in my stories or IGTV. IGTV is great because it'll stay on your, your feed uh, and it won't expire in 24 hours. So yeah, I, hopefully that helps answer your question, but those are the things that I would be mindful of, but also put yourself in the position of someone reading. And I know personally, when I see something that's too long, I'm like, whew, I just don't have time. But if it's something, if you hook people, that first line of your caption should be the most important. That should be the one where, oh, you have my attention. I want to keep reading. So that might be the best way to start. Make sure that first line is enough to like, and usually that's through a call to action or a question. So thank you. And thank you, John. And next question comes from Carol. She wants to know how many images should you include with each post? Great question. Um, so it can be as easy as one. The nice thing, so they're called carousels. So when you add multiple images to one post, that is great for engagement because now people need to go through. So what are they doing? They're staying on your feed longer. So that is great. And Instagram knows that when they know when people are staying on your feed longer. So that's, a, that's great for growth and engagement as long as it's relevant. So if you're, you know, and again, I love that visual storytelling. I don't do multiples all the time, but when I do, it's usually like swipe to see before and after or keep going and see how I did this. And yeah, I mean, 
you don't have to do it all the time, but if it's relevant and you can't put it into one image and you want to do a little bit more storytelling, that's awesome because people will stay on longer and then they're visually being kind of told this story. And you can break that up a little tip if you want. I've done it. If you go in my feed, go back a little bit or don't even have to. Um, in between images, you can also create in Canva just an Instagram post that's more text. So I've done that for tutorial stuff where I did an ice cream shot and I shared the image and it was on a, you know, swipe right to see my process. And then I went for the text. So like basically how you see this Q and A, it was just a square and it said, first I did this. Okay. And then they swiped and then I showed them. The next was another me, literally just words with my brand colors. I incorporated that. Um, and then, and then I did this and a tip and then swipe again. So now, you know, anyone who was on that post, they were probably sitting on my feed for a little bit because I'm telling them a story. So it is a great opportunity. Hopefully that answers it. Awesome, thank you. And yeah, Canva is definitely a tool that's changed a lot of how we do stuff. For and it's free. Yeah, yeah. You're an instant graphic designer, so it's right. really cool. I know, Canva gives you like good confidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, awesome. And next question is from Casey. If you have gone into the dark for a while to recalibrate, is it possible to begin posting consistently again and not be lost anymore due to the algorithm? Sorry, can you repeat that? It just, it just cut out a little bit. Sorry. So if you have gone into the dark for a while to recalibrate, is it possible to begin posting consistently again and not be lost due to the algorithm? Absolutely. The, the best thing I can say, if you've gone dark or you just haven't posted in a while, Insta it's still there. That platform is there for you. Instagram wants people on Instagram. So to pick it back up again, I was just having this conversation with a client and I said, you just have to go. You just have to start posting. You have to develop a strategy, figure out what your messaging is and show up. Just keep showing up. You're not going to be penalized because you haven't been using it because if everybody kind of dropped off and they all came back, Instagram loves that. They want people on their platform. And that's why they keep adding in all these opportunities to keep people on longer. So IGTV, stories. Um, I follow Adam Mossery. He's the president of Instagram. It's a great account to follow. And they're putting in so much effort into, because of the way with this pandemic, they want people to be more connected more than ever. So now you can do like two-way lives with people and they're, they're still adding in more. So the biggest thing is, doesn't matter if you haven't been on, if you're looking, again, as long as it's the platform for you, not every business should be on Instagram there are better platforms. And a, a side tip to that, you don't have to be on every platform. You don't have to be on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all of the things. You can just, to my suggestion is focus on one. I have an Instagram page or a Facebook page. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't post on it. I, I, once I committed to Instagram, the time has lifted. My strategy is more concise. That would be, especially starting out, choose one. You can always go to other um, platforms later on, but choose one and own it and focus on it. So I hope that hopefully that answers the question. But if you are choosing Instagram to be your one, you're not going to be penalized for showing back up again. Not at all. Okay, awesome. And then you talked about Instagram TV. Where can we find that on Instagram? Okay, so if you haven't created your first IGTV, it won't show on your profile. So I'm gonna pull my profile up. I hopefully you can see. It's gonna be uh, right in the middle. So we have your feed and then anything you've been tagged in. In the middle, it's the little TV icon. Now it's showing on mine because I have a channel. Um, IGTV is a separate app. So on your phone, you'll have to go into your app store and download IGTV. So everything gets uploaded to IGTV through a different app. So it looks like this. Whoop. Um, it's like the orange. So you actually have to download that app. So you won't be able to post anything onto um, IGTV unless you have that. Once you're in, it's basically like a whole channel. So anybody you follow, it's still going to be linked to your Instagram account. And then in the top, you can view your own profile and upload directly from there. So if you haven't used IGTV, that's a great question because it is a different app. And then once you're in it, you can, you have the option of sharing your IGTV video right on your feed. 
but you don't have to. It'll prompt you. And then you can create a thumbnail. So thumbnails are like cover images. And I mention this because I'll pull up, I haven't done an IGTV in a few weeks, but I, <laughs> when you do an IGTV and you share it on your feed, so I don't know if you can see that, but if you scroll down, I did a charcuterie tutorial and I put a cover image. Otherwise, if you don't, and you can create those in Canva. If you don't and you put it on your feed and it just takes a thumbnail from the reel of your video, you're going to have one of those funny, weird photos where you might be like, ah, and it's like that freeze frame of you talking and then that's on your feed. So either don't include it on your, I think you should include it on your feed because you'll get more visibility, but I highly recommend going to Canva and you can type in search in Canva, IGTV cover. It's going to do all the dimensions for you. And then you can share that on your feed. And then it'll still be consistent with, with what your, your, your grid would look like. Okay, awesome. And that question came from Carol. So thank you, Carol. Great question. This one from Kathy. Tips on hashtags and latest thinking on hashtags. Oh, hashtags are the bane of, I think, everyone's existence. Um, did we, I feel like in our episode, the, how we got to a thousand followers, I feel like, I think we did talk about hashtags. So definitely give that a listen. Um, so hashtags, people use them really two different ways. They use them to kind of hopefully draw in people and hashtags are basically a search tool. So what I would suggest, use hashtags that you think your customers would be using, not what you do. If you are a, you can mix in some, it's, it's such a heated debate with hashtags, but think of it this way. If I'm looking to attract clients, maybe my clients are, uh, well, photographers. I'm a stylist. I'd like to, uh, I want to work with photographers. So instead of me always putting hashtag styling, hashtag prop style, hashtag social styling, um, which I have used, but I'm also putting in brand photography, brand photographer. I'm not a brand photographer, but I want to work with them. And what are brand photographers tagging when they're sharing their stuff? brand photography, brand photographer. So starting to think about what your ideal client, what hashtags they're using, because they're probably following them too, because you can follow hashtags. So if there's a certain industry that you're like, yeah, I want to follow along. I want to see what they're posting. You should also be following your dream clients, potential hashtags that you think that they would use. Does that, I hope that that answers your question. All right, thank you. And the next question comes from Allison. Uh, she is wondering what is the best way to upload videos to Insta Stories. Sometimes she finds that with her internet connection, depending on where I am. Yep. Okay. Hands free video gets split into four pieces, and then they're uploaded in the incorrect order. Ah, uh, okay. So having um, a good connection is important because I know that that has happened before. Um, I believe it's 15 seconds, that's the allotment. So if um, the other option with that would be to go live. I know that's also very scary, but live will, will be around for 24 hours and then you can people can still see it so it won't cut you off. So if you know like I have, and, and people can join in, they can watch live and don't ever let a live stop you. If you have two people watching, that's awesome. If you have nobody watching, keep going because it's still going to sit there and you never know if they're going to watch it later. I have gone on lives where there's two people and I'm still talking as if I'm speaking to a thousand people. And those two people matter too, right? If they're actually watching, they're probably interested. So I don't care if it's one, two, 500, whatever. Don't even look at the number, share your message. So to get back to your question, that might be an option. If you know that you're going to be sharing something a little bit longer, uh, go live and then save it so it'll still stay in your feed for the 24 hours, just like a story. Or um, one of the tricks that I use, especially because I'm always very mindful, like I wanna show up consistently on Instagram, but I'm also a mom and I don't want my son to see me on my phone all the time. It's creating that balance, that's that work-life balance. Um, I will go on and do a story and be like, hey guys, so I'm here on you know a webinar right now, this is awesome, and say whatever I wanna say, in the top corner, when you're doing, 
Um, hey, there, I'll take a photo, my goofy face. Up here, the, to the right of the X, there's a little arrow pointing down, save it. And then when you know you're in a good area of, oh, okay, like I have full bars, um, or, oh, my son is here, okay, I gotta, I'll put it later. Cause you know, you also, when you're on Instagram stories, add hashtags, tag people, add geotags, your location or where you want to reach people. Um, but if it's like, oh, I'm just gonna post. To be honest, don't post it if you're not gonna add a hashtag or, or at least mention someone. And also if you're talking a lot on your Instagram stories, if anyone's followed me along, you know I talk a lot. And what I'll do, even this morning, look at my stories from this morning, about half an hour before I jumped on here, I'm like, hey guys, I'm doing the coffee talk. I made sure to tag the appropriate people. I put my location in Barrie because it is really where we're talking to our local people. And, um, oh my gosh, where was I going with this? Oh. Um, so I added all that, but I'm talking and I always put a little blurb of what I'm saying because I don't know about you. I don't usually have my volume on. So when I'm watching Netflix and I'm looking at people's stories, nine times out of 10, I'm not listening. I'm hoping that they're going to put the gist of it in a caption. So check mine out this morning. You'll see where it's like, Hey guys, I'm on a coffee chat this morning. I'm still rambling on, but the gist of it is people want to know like, wait, and what the heck are you spewing off today? Well, I'm on a coffee chat. Well, you can see that. Hopefully, yeah, sorry, my answers are very long. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is all good. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, yeah. A couple more questions. So yep. from Carol, she's a personal brand photographer. So mm -hmm. what social media do you suggest is her strength? Right now she works with businesses, so she posts mostly on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Google My Business. Okay, definitely love the, the LinkedIn because I feel like, um, if that's the if that's the market you're looking for, like professional services, that's where the that's where they're hanging out. They're usually on LinkedIn, 100% um, Instagram because it's the most visual platform. The other, again, I would say to me, like Instagram and uh, LinkedIn would probably be the best too, especially from timing. Like going back to what I was saying, like when we're trying to show up on all the platforms, it. Does everybody know Steam Whistle Beer? Their tagline is do one thing really, really well. And they have one beer and it's their Steam Whistle Pilsner. That's it. And I always think of that. That's the marketing person in me is focus on one thing and rock it. Or the two, if you can balance it. But for that type of industry, yeah, I would 100% say Instagram, LinkedIn. Third to that, you know, down the road or like wedding photographers, especially the ones that travel, they should be on Pinterest. Pinterest is huge and visual and it's a worldwide reach. Now, if you're reaching more local, then yes, I would say Instagram and LinkedIn. Just thinking about where you're finding your people, right? Um, I'm on Instagram. My next that I'm slowly bringing in for the social focus is Pinterest because we're launching an online program or we, um, our podcast. We can reach anybody. So that's like, that's really expanding. So that's where, as an example, that's where I'm going to put those nuts in that basket. All right. Awesome. And next question, are there certain kinds of businesses that are most suitable to Instagram? That's from Jamie. Um, personally, I think anybody could make Instagram work. I mean, Instagram, if you think of it as visual storytelling. So if you can consistently show up, whether you're um, a lawyer, a realtor, a, an investor, a financial advisor, a photographer, a wedding planner, um, it, again, when you align with whatever platform that you choose, I think Instagram is an opportunity for anybody because anybody can, even if you don't wanna share a lot of images, you can still storytell through stories and IGTV. Um, I, I think, yeah, I hope that answers it. I think that there's an opportunity for any type of business, whether, it, it, the, I think the struggle is, how do I show my message? Because it is a, it's a visual platform. And so once you can start, if you really sit back, and that's where intention comes in, intention and consistency and authenticity of, I know what I wanna say, how could I put that into an image? There are some businesses out there. Um, I know like an industrial cleaning business. They're on Instagram and they're still showing up. And it doesn't matter if they don't have 
30,000 followers or a thousand followers or even 500 followers, if they're finding the right people and they're gaining business from it, would you not rather like ultimately don't let the vanity of, Oh, I really want to get to 10,000. Yeah, that's nice. Can you serve 10,000 people in your business? And we talk a lot about this on our podcast, know your number. So if you don't think that you can make it work, but you get a hundred followers and 10 of them buy from you and they're your customers or they keep coming back or they learn from you. That's a great platform to be on. That's a great position to be in. So hopefully that answers it. But I, I do, I think that Instagram, um, it can work, but there's a strategy to it. And it comes back to crafting uh, your message and being consistent. All right, thank you. And we'll do one last question from Janine. How many hashtags should you use? What is too many or not enough? So the max is 30. I would say if you really struggle with hashtags, uh, seven to nine is, is a good minimum. And you can put those into the actual, like your first comment can be your hashtags. You don't have to put it in your actual post if it kind of looks a little spammy. Um, I would suggest seven to nine and um, don't use the same ones all the time. If you're just copying and pasting the same hashtags all the time, um, it's not gonna work for you. There's a great example. I was reading an article um, and someone had like, where it had absolutely nothing to do with the image or what the message was. They were just trying to jump on a popular hashtag. And that's a no-no. Your hashtags should be relevant to your business, to what you're posting and what your image is. Um, so seven to nine, I think is great. I usually do anywhere between nine and 24. It just really depends. Um, so don't use the same ones all the time. Make sure that they're relevant to what you're posting at that time. They drive me nuts because they're constantly changing. Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that, that answers it. I think that's a really great way to start. And then look at what your dream clients are using as their hashtags. If you are selling to, um, uh, let's think, like if you're a, a wedding planner, you start searching or using, I said yes. I said yes to the dress because what are brides posting? They're posting that. And then when you search those hashtags, that's how you find, you can find brides. You can find the ones who are using it. Those are potential customers. Yeah. Are we still there? Oh, I think you're, you froze there, Angela. <laughs> oh no, am I still frozen? No, I got you back now. All right, but- okay. uh, I wasn't faces like <gasps> yeah you were frozen already on mine <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your time um now oh my pleasure this is awesome my internet says it's unstable so hopefully i'm not frozen but yeah thank you everyone for joining us on a holiday monday with your coffee we really appreciate it